Hi everybody and welcome to the video. If you're new around here, please consider liking and subscribing or sharing this video with a friend if you feel it may be of some value. Now, what you'll be seeing uh, as we head into January is the start of my training plan for the North Downs Way 50 2022. And I'm still tweaking that plan at the moment, still trying to finalise what I want to do. But for the first six weeks or so, what you'll see is me out my runs, just um, building that base, just having some fun. No real specific plan necessarily at that point, just building the consistency of the number of runs per week that I want to be doing. And then when my body's adjusted to that, because at the moment I'm not running as much, as soon as I'm um, becoming a little bit more accustomed to the number of runs per week, then we'll start to narrow down and focus in on the specific workouts that are going to support me in my goal to achieve the North Downs Way 50 mile distance in under 10 hours. So today's video, as you've seen, is all about the shoes, which shoes will be wearing, not only to train in, but to run the race in. So without further ado, let's get into that chat. Now, when I began training last year for North Downs Way 50, 2021, I was running in the Hoka ATR Challenger 5, and that's this shoe here. It's a shoe that I had three versions of, and um, I was running them on rotation. I absolutely love this shoe. I buy it in a wide fit, uh, so I go half size up and wide, just to allow my feet uh, the opportunity to sort of swell, adjust, and uh, I've never had any issues whatsoever. Unfortunately, the ATR5 then became discontinued and I found it impossible to find a pair that I could then use on race day. I felt there was too much mileage in the shoes that I had. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have got away with wearing them, wouldn't have made a difference, but you know, when you're thinking about the, the key race, you wanna make sure that the footwear isn't the part that lets you down. But I'll get onto that in a moment. Now, the next shoe that I actually bought last year in the Black Friday sale for, I think, around 55 pounds was the Hoka Torrent. This shoe's got about 10 miles in it. I totally forgot I actually owned it, which seems a bit ludicrous, doesn't it? But I put it away in the box because I wasn't using it for my training last year. And it was only when I moved house and recently I actually found it again. So this may well feature my training, but it all depends on the terrain that I'm using, the routes that I'm taking, as to whether this shoe will be uh, beneficial to use or not. But I've got the Hoka Torrent anyway, which is kind of in the locker. So the ATR5s are retired now. I don't really use those at all. Occasional runs maybe, but nothing. Um, too intense, the Hoka Torrent you just saw there. Now, during my training for the race last year, I committed therefore to the Hoka ATR6. Now, I had um, a pair that I got off eBay, and just to clarify this point, I'm not absolutely flush with cash and just spending it on shoes. Um, most of my shoes are bought, well, actually, all of my shoes, in fact, are bought in the sale or on eBay. And the reason why I buy on eBay as well is because often people are bought in the wrong size and they've used it past the 30 days. And so at the point of buying them, they've got 10 miles and the 15 miles in them. So I'm gonna show you a shoe actually that I, I did buy off eBay for a very cheap price. So I started using the ATR6. Now this Hoka ATR6 was a good shoe. This particular one you see here is the one that I bought for race day. So I had a training ATR6 shoe, which is all black. That actually fell apart, weirdly, um, and Hoka replaced it for me. And when they replaced it for me, I thought I'll buy this new shoe here. This was a shoe I was going to use for race day. Again, it's half size up and it's wide. Um, but when it came close to race day, I actually used the Gore-Tex version, which is one here. Now this Gore-Tex version, I'd used a huge amount of my training, both shoes in fact, um, it's not a wide fit. So what happened on race day was actually in using this shoe, I lost a toenail, one big toenail. And I think that's down to the fact that it wasn't wide fit and actually it wasn't really wet enough or muddy enough on the day to justify using it. However, there was a bit of rain leading up to the event. I got cold feet thinking about the fact that, you know, I might end up with foot issues. So I wanted to protect them by wearing some Gore-Tex shoes. The thing about Gore-Tex shoes is yes, it keeps the rain out, but also if you get water in, it doesn't come out either. So I would have been better to have used the original here, but it is what it is, you live and you learn. So I've got the ATR sixes, which are still in rotation. I've got quite a few hundred miles into the shoes now, but um, they're useful nonetheless uh, to you. So you've got the ATR sixes, which may feature um, this year because I do use them quite frequently and I do like running in the shoe. And then um, in the summer of this year, I actually bought another shoe. That shoe is the Hoka Mac 4. Now, um, I wore this for a fast 5K, 10K effort, and then I fell out of love with this shoe because I thought it was causing some ankle injuries. Turns out it wasn't a shoe at all, it was just my body. Um, so I'm now back into this shoe, and I really, really enjoy it. Of course, it's not suitable for trails, but it is good for some fast workouts on the residential streets, the kind of thing I might do late at night, head torch stuff, just real, real simple shoes. So this is gonna be something that you see throughout my training. Uh, this year and then we're on to some of the shoes that you see behind me because again um, 
when I'm thinking about a shoe for race day, I want to make sure I buy it in advance so that I can use it through my training and then have a, a second pair of them because I've learned my lesson really, especially with the ATR fives that I should have bought another pair, but I didn't. And then what happens is they get discontinued or for me, I'm a slightly awkward size. So I'm half size up and I'm wide. And because of that, it means that the opportunities to buy these different types of shoes is, is far, far more reduced rather than just being a, a standard fit. Um, so, yeah, the shoes you've seen there have done me well so far. And that Gore-Tex one, so I meant to say, I bought them off eBay, I bought them for £40, and they had four miles in them. Um, just absolutely phenomenal. And they did me so well. They did me you know, 50 miles in the day. I did that shoe off the back of a cheap eBay purchase. So we'll talk about the shoes behind me now. And again, these shoes behind me I bought um, in the Black Friday sale and in the Hoka winter sale. And I also had a, a discount code and I had a voucher. So essentially these shoes were were very very cheap um cheaper than you would buy them standard price i'm going to show you those shoes now and this should be my rotation that i use predominantly for my training for the north Downs way 50 2020. so first shoe of the box is the hoka speed goat 4. now i've never actually run in a speed goat before i've always wanted to never the opportunity to so these were reduced in the sale um, now there is a slight difference here because these are half size up but these are not wide okay so these will be fine fine to use these shoes for shorter runs um, I find that the wide fit benefits me definitely on the long runs because that's when my feet start to expand that's where I can experience issues so no problem at all wearing these for the short stuff and this is going to be a training shoe so there's the Hoka Speedgo 4 and I'm going to show you what the shoe I've decided to pick for race day is going to be so, race day shoe is this one here, and as you can see, in case Hoka are watching, um, it's 10 and a half UK and it's wide fit, please. Or if there's anybody out there who's got lots of money who would like to send me some shoes, I would really, really appreciate it. Okay, here they are, beautiful pair of shoes. So these are going to be my race day shoes. Now, hopefully, with the other speed goats, the training goes really, really smoothly and they feel really good for me and I'll be using, using the wide fit on the day. What I'm also going to be doing is training in those for the short runs and all my long runs will be in this shoe here once we get into the training just so I'm really comfortable with what the shoe offers. Um, so this is my shoe of choice for race day and I think it's going to be really good on the trails. Um, if the conditions are variable I think it's still going to be a shoe that holds up really really well. So um, could actually only buy one of these. There was none that's available. This was the last one in stock so again that gives you an insight into how tricky it is for me to buy pair of shoes in the right size that are going to fit me uh, really really well so Hoka Speedgoat 4 training long runs pretty consistent there I know it's important to have a bit of rotation so let's talk about that so recently um, as I say Hoka had another sale come on and um, I was tempted by a few different shoes and I went for in the end this pair of shoes that came out I think again about 68 pounds um, maybe even less actually with my additional discount and it's a Hoka uh, Mafate 3s, uh, the Speed 3s. Again, never worn a pair of these shoes before, but I saw them and I figured, look, this is going to be something that I'm going to be dedicating myself to, a lot, a lot of trail work. And to have you know, three pairs of shoes, fortunately, fresh out of the box, gives me a lot of opportunity to just tear them up on the trails, including the shoes I've just shown you there. I like to run the shoes into the ground. So um, me buying these new pairs of shoes, I don't then just throw the ones away. They then get moved to hiking shoes, walking shoes, day-to-day -day shoes, and that's what happens, and then eventually they um, you know, reach the end of their life. But I just move everything along, everything down the line. So I've got these shoes here, which should be nice for um, for the trails also. And um, I've got one more pair of shoes I'm gonna show you, but they're more of a daily shoe, I reckon. So we've got a little collab here, um, Hoka with um, Outdoor Voices, which is another, another brand. And I only picked up these shoes because they were cheap. So this shoe actually turns out it's the Clifton 4. I actually bought it because it's more of a day-to-day -day shoe. You'll see from the colour where I can wear it without it looking too much like a running shoe. That's my primary reason for buying it. It's unlikely I'll be using it out and about on the trails or on runs. It is very unlikely. But if I do a sort of a run commute to work, this is the kind of shoe I would be using because I can use it at work. So I thought I'd just show you anyway because it may well feature in my training. Um, but like I said, it's probably going to be just day-to-day -day use. And if I'm using it for work, it does give me a chance to do a bit of run commuting uh, if the weather allows and time allows. So let's get into what the shoe looks like. Okay, so here it is. Look, this is the um, Hoka, as you can see here, Clifton 4. A little bit cheeky, basically. It's old stock, isn't it? Um, so Clifton 4, it's got kind of a, it's a travelator from the Gladiator TV show up the sides here. Um, yeah, pretty 
stock, nothing too fancy. You can see here, it's it's not the kind of shoe that's going to have loads of grip for the trails or anything like that, but it would be just a good uh, residential runner, I reckon. Um, and yeah, for going for work. So I thought I'd just show you those shoes. Now, in summary, what you've seen there is I've got a, uh, an archive of shoes that I've been using over the last 18 months, which I showed you at the start of the video. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have these new shoes here, which I'm going to start to use uh, as soon as January hits. And that's the idea that I'm going to try my best to rotate a little bit more. And even though it's the same brand, the shoes are slightly different. I think it's gonna be important for, especially for kind of ankle strength, um, foot flexibility, mobility, to just get in some different shoes. Have got some New Balance out there that I ran my New York Virtual Marathon in. I don't really like them. Don't really enjoy running in them. They're a bit, a bit unpleasant for me. I just, I just don't get the same. Uh, level of excitement and comfort as I do from the Hokers so I've, I've kind of committed myself to this brand but in the difference between this time around and last time is that I just trained in one pair of shoes really last year North Downs way because ATR 5s I couldn't get anymore it was ATR 6s more or less from day one and it was just a rotation of two shoes but from the same kind of stock model um, so this time around using the Speed Goats using the Mafates um, bringing out the ATR 6s if I need to, maybe the Torrents as well and the Mac 4. So just trying to get some different shoes going in and out of my kind of rotation and cycle. So let me know if you've got any of these shoes. Um, uh, like I said, I'm not actually a massive shoe guy. I didn't realise until recently when I moved house how many I've got. So it's a little bit over the top. But I know it's interesting for some people to, to know the kind of shoes that I'll be wearing on race day. And this is quite a long-winded uh, way of talking about it all. But again, I like to provide as much detail as possible. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you're running North Downs Way, what are you going to be using? 